through Artemis, the twin sister of Apollo, we are returning to the moon. This is Orion, the only human-rated spacecraft in the world capable of deep space travel. And now, the Space Launch System, NASA's most powerful rocket since the Apollo era, stands ready. In a step closer to launch, NASA's new, powerful Space Launch System moon rocket was hauled from its launch pad back to the Vehicle Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center Saturday for final repairs, testing, and closeouts, moving closer to liftoff later this summer after completing a fueling demonstration last month. The 322-foot or 98-meter-tall moon rocket rolled off its post at Pad 39B at 4.12 a.m. Saturday, about five hours behind schedule, to allow time for extra inspections. A diesel-powered crawler transporter carried the SLS rocket down the ramp and along the rock-covered crawlerway on the 4.2-mile or 6.8-kilometer journey back to the vehicle assembly building. The launcher rolled into High Bay 3 of the iconic assembly hangar around 2 p.m. and was secured inside the VAB about a half hour later. The return of the SLS Moon rocket to the Vehicle Assembly Building moves the Artemis 1 mission a step closer to launch on a test flight around the moon. After a decade in development costing more than $20 billion, the Artemis 1 mission will mark the first flight of the huge SLS Moon rocket, sending an Orion crew capsule on a course to orbit the moon. The test flight will not carry astronauts, but will be the first launch of a human-rated rocket and spacecraft to the moon since the Apollo program. If the Artemis 1 flight goes according to plan, NASA intends for the next SLS-Orion mission, which is Artemis 2, to carry a crew around in a loop on the far side of the moon and back to Earth in 2024, marking the first astronaut voyage to the moon since 1972. Future Artemis missions will incorporate a commercial crew lander to ferry astronauts between the Orion spacecraft in lunar orbit and the surface of the moon. NASA's launch team fully loaded the moon rocket with cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants during a practice countdown on June 20th accomplishing a major test objective managers wanted to complete before proceeding with final launch preps. However, the June 20th countdown rehearsal was not free of trouble. Engineers detected a hydrogen leak in a quick disconnect fitting near the bottom of the rocket's core stage in a line that dumps excess hydrogen overboard from the system to thermally condition the four RS-25 main engines for ignition. The launch team overcame the problem and continued the countdown to T-29 seconds, about 20 seconds before the time engineers wanted to reach in the dress rehearsal. One of the final test objectives not accomplished on June 20th was a hot fire of hydraulic pumps powering the steering mechanisms on the rocket's two solid-fueled boosters, which provide 80% of the steering control for the first two minutes of launch. NASA ground team successfully activated the hydraulic power units during a separate test on June 25th, paving the way for crews to prep the rocket for rollback to the vehicle assembly building. Once the rocket was back inside the assembly building, workers will extend 10 sets of access platforms to reach various levels of the launch vehicle and erect an access stand to reach the leaky hydrogen line. Aside from already planned work to prepare the rocket for launch, technicians will prepare the leaky hydrogen connector discovered during the fueling demonstration last month. Workers will replace Teflon seals on quick disconnect fittings in the tail service mast umbilical, the connection that routes cryogenic propellants between the mobile launch platform and the SLS core stage. Officials believe one of those seals loosened in the 4-inch quick disconnect that started leaking during the June 20th countdown rehearsal. Phil Weber, an integration manager on the Artemis ground operations team, said last week that workers will also likely change out a similar seal on a larger 8-inch propellant fill and drain line as a preemptive measure. Other work inside the VAB will include changing out an avionics box on the SLS upper stage and a software load on the upper stage computer. The ground crew will also stow final equipment inside the pressurized cabin on the Orion spacecraft and install flight batteries on the core stage, boosters, and second stage, according to Cliff Lanham, the Artemis One flow director on NASA's ground operations team at KSC. Then, ultimately, we want to do our flight termination system testing, and once that's complete, we'll be able to perform our final inspections on all the volumes of the vehicle and do our closeouts. 
Lanham said in a June 24th press briefing. The flight termination system consists of pyrotechnic charges on the rocket that would be fired to destroy the vehicle if it veered off course and threatened populated areas. The ground crew inside the VAB will arm the flight termination system and perform an end-to-end -end test, demonstrating the ability of the Space Force's range safety team to send a destruct command to the SLS Moon rocket. The flight termination system is only certified for 20 days after completion of the test, and the rocket would need to be hauled back to the VAB to revalidate the destruct mechanisms. According to Lanham, work on the SLS Moon rocket inside the vehicle assembly building will take about 6 to 8 weeks. Weber said the ground crew will be hustling to roll the rocket back to Pad 39B after the flight termination system check. The rocket will need to spend 10 to 14 days on the pad before the first launch attempt, and the schedule currently shows the Artemis 1 team could fit in three launch attempts before the 20-day flight termination system certification clock expires. The space agency has not formally set a target launch date for the SLS Moon rocket, but officials are aiming to have the launcher ready to blast off on the Artemis 1 test flight in late August or early September, when the alignment of the Moon, the Sun, and the Earth will enable the mission to meet all its objectives. A launch period opens August 23rd and runs until September 6th. NASA has another launch period available beginning September 19th and extending until October 4th, followed by three more two-week launch periods through the end of the year. Depending on when the Artemis 1 mission takes off, the Orion test flight could last roughly 26 days or as long as 42 days. The mission duration hinges on the location of the moon relative to Earth, allowing the Orion spacecraft to complete a half orbit or one and a half distant orbits around the moon. The launch periods are constrained by a number of considerations, including the position of the moon in its orbit around the Earth, limits on how long the Orion spacecraft can fly in shadow without direct sunlight on its solar arrays, and re-entry and splashdown rules, including a requirement for a daytime return to Earth to aid in recovery operations in the Pacific Ocean. NASA officials are expected to set a target launch date as soon as next week. So with all this talk of the SLS's first launch, are you excited for it? Let us know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.